Hello and welcome. My name is Ms. Cresta and I'm a piano and orchestra director in South Texas. And today I'm going to be walking you through the basics of treble clef. So we are going to be learning how to read things music in treble clef, commonly used for instruments such as violin, flute, trumpet, or maybe the right hand of the piano. Sometimes that changes. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first is we are going to take a look at this thing called the staff. On the staff, we have lines and spaces, but the very first thing we have is our clef. So the thing on the very far left side is called the clef, specifically in this case, the treble clef. We're gonna go ahead and take a look that we have four space notes. So we have one, two, three, four space notes that go between the lines. There is no line that ever goes and intersects between and through the notes. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look and read our notes going from left to right, starting from the bottom to the top. Our first note is the note F. Then we have A, then we have C, and then we have the note E. And if you notice down there at the bottom, it might spell something out. So our thing to help us remember is space rhymes with face. This is the only one of all the lines and spaces of all the clefs that spells out a word. So F-A-C-E spells face. So our saying to help us remember is space rhymes with face. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our line notes. So our line notes are a little bit different. There are five lines. And what's really cool is if you take a look at your hand, you have five fingers and between those fingers, you have four spaces, just like your staff. You have a built-in staff right in your hand. Just like we did for our spaces, we are going to read going left to right, bottom to top. Our first note is the note E. Then we have G, then B, D, F. Unlike our spaces where space rhymes with base, this one is going to have an actual saying that goes along with it. And our saying is going to be, every good burger deserves fries. Super easy to remember because of course, every good burger deserves some really good fries to go with it. So our line notes going from bottom to top, E, G, B, D, F. Every good burger deserves fries. So now that we've taken a look at our notes, we are going to take a look at something really cool with the treble clef. So the treble clef is also known as the G clef. Just like we did before with the lines, it goes bottom to top every good. And as you can see, the arrow is pointing to G where the little swirl of the treble clef goes around G. That is why the treble clef is called the G clef. Now that we have a little bit of fun facts, we're gonna go on and take a look at something that's also very cool. In music, we only use our alphabet letters going up to the letter G. So we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then go back to A again. So if we take our lines and our spaces that we just learned and we put them together, we have the alphabet. So the notes and the staff go up the musical alphabet as it moves up the staff. So if we start with E, we have E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. And if we were to keep going, it would go G, A, B, and so on, so forth. So as you can see, not only do we have our lines, every good burger deserves fries, but we have our spaces, F, A, C, E, which spells face. So let's say we want even more notes because we can't just have that many notes. There has to be more especially if we're gonna play our instruments, we will use something that we call ledger lines. Ledger lines are used to extend the staff in either direction. So there is no fun saying for all of our ledger lines, but we can use our newfound musical alphabet knowledge to help us. So let's say we want to figure out our first ledger line note. What we'll do is we'll find a note that we know and work our way up or down the alphabet to figure it out. So in this case, the note that I know is my very first line, E. And I'm gonna go down one, E goes to D, and then it would go down to 
C. So that note, that very first one, would be the note C. Now let's say I want to know and read the next note, the one that goes above the staff, so the ledger lines can extend the staff down below or up really high. I will find a note that I know and work my way up from where I was, so now I'll go up the alphabet. So I know that my top line is an F, so I have F, G, then I go back to A, B, C. So this is a C that is on the upper ledger line, so it's gonna be played higher pitched. So ledger lines are used to extend the staff above and below the range that we learned today. So now you have the basics to reading treble clef. There are a couple other videos for parts of the staff or reading in other clefs, but this is just some things to help you get started. Thank you for joining me and happy music reading.